Hello everyone. Today we'll be continuing our discussion on alternate status, and we'll start the toxicology portion of the discussion. And in this lecture, we'll talk about osmolal gap. So, what is osmolality? Osmolality is nothing but amount of solute which is measured in moles divided by amount of solvent in kilograms. Osmolality depends upon number of molecules in that solution. And as you know, one mole of any substance has 6.02 into 10 raised to the 23 molecules. That's your Avogadro's number. So one osmol per liter of sugar will have 6 into 10 raised to the 23 molecules of sugar in one liter of water. Osmolality and osmolality are pretty similar in medicine because one liter of water weighs one kilograms. While osmolality is measured in moles per liter, osmolality is measured. Moles per kilograms. If you want to be exact, one milliosmol per kg equals 0.985 milliosmol per liter. This is clinically not significant. One of the things that you have to remember is larger molecules contribute smaller amount to osmolality since per gram they have fewer molecules. So number of molecules in the solute will be equal to weight of the substance divided by the molecular weight. For example, albumin has molecular weight of 66,000. and it is present in 4 g per deciliter in serum therefore contributes only 0.6 mmol per kilograms while sodium which is much smaller molecule with molecular weight of 23 and is present in only 0.3 g per dl and contributes 140 mmol to the solution normal serum osmolality is between 280 to 290 mmol per kilogram of serum and these are different type of molecules that are present in different quantities we have got positive ions negative ions and neutral ions in the past 50 years doctors and scientists have been trying to figure out a way to calculate normal osmolality instead of measuring it and they have derived multiple equations to measure the normal osmolality however the formula by smithline and gardner in 1975 which you have already read in your textbook is the most simple and very accurate so we'll be using this formula so using the formula you get the osmolality of sodium multiplied by 2 plus osmolality of glucose and urea multiplication of sodium by 2 takes care of the negative compartment as well as sodium is the major positive ion to your positive compartment so when you subtract calculated osmolality from measured osmolality you get a osmolal gap normal osmolal gap can range from minus 10 to plus 10 addition of small neutral molecules such as alcohol aldehydes ketones or mannitol or positively charged molecules like lithium gamma globulins can add to the extra molecules in the measured system while these molecules won't enter your calculated measurements so you will see that your osmolal gap has increased osmolal gap less than 10 is considered normal and more than 20 is indicative of significant amount of extra osmoles osmolal gap between 10 to 20 can be still seen in alcohol ingestion while it is also common in patients with ketoacidosis renal failure and critical illness the important thing to understand here is the units if your unit is millimole per kg you simply add all these and get osmolality as you already know that sodium is measured in millimoles or milliequivalents and since sodium has got charge of 1 millimoles and milliequivalents are same if your measurement unit is in milligram per dl you have to use some dividing factors for example glucose by 18 and bun by 2.8 and these two denominator come because when you convert milligram per dl into millimole per liter you have to divide the molecular weight by 10 to get your divisors so the unit must be in milligram per dl to use these divisors so watch out for units so for example molecular weight of glucose is 180 so glucose is divided by 18 one of the other confusion that comes in some lab will measure bun while others will measure urea and here depending on what you measure your divisors are different if you have bun you divide by 2.8 and if you have urea use 6 so 
So when do you send serum osmolality? If you're encountered with a patient with coma of unknown cause, suspected overdose or suicidal attempt, or unexplained anion gap metabolic acidosis, it's wise to send a serum osmolality and calculate osmolal gap. Patient in ICU who are on IV lorazepam drips or diazepam drips need to be monitored for serum osmolality as well. One of the things that you have to understand in osmolal gap is that this is an early finding in alcohol ingestion as these alcohols will get metabolized and therefore their osmolal gap will decrease with time. So always check the serum osmolality at the time of presentation. You can certainly use osmolal gap to follow up the treatment of alcohol ingestion along with anion gaps. Two other reasons to check serum osmolality are during hyponatremia workup and when you are treating cerebral edema when you are using mannitol or hypotonic saline. Osmolality is measured by freezing point depression method. When you dissolve a solute in water, the freezing point of water gets lower and that depends upon the amount of osmoles of solute. And measuring the freezing point difference, you can calculate how much osmoles are present. So let's do an example. Let's say your measured plasma osmolality from the lab was 350 milliosmol and you have sodium of 140, BUN 28, and glucose of 90. So your calculated plasma osmolality is 295, and your osmolal gap is 55. This is a high osmolal gap, so your patient has volatile alcohol ingestion. If your lab has capacity to measure ethanol, say your lab value was 92, you can use the osmolality contribution by ethanol by dividing alcohol levels by 4.6, and adding it to calculated plasma osmolality. And now when you measure the osmolal gap, it is still 31. So there are still extra osmol present that are not explained by ethanol. So a patient might have additional alcohol ingestions. To calculate these divisors, know their molecular rate and divide by 10. Word of caution, Absence of osmolal gap does not completely exclude alcohol-related intoxication because you can have late presentation when alcohols have been metabolized or you have lower number of larger molecules. Remember that the normal range of osmolal gap is minus 10 to plus 10. So let's say for example you have ethylene glycol toxicity and your levels are 50 mg per dl which are pretty toxic levels. Their osmolal gap component from this level would be 50 divided by 6.2 that is 8. And you can already see if your osmolal gap was zero and you have toxic level of ethylene glycol, your osmolal gap will be still eight. Smaller molecules will have a larger component towards the osmolality. So methyl alcohol, which is a smaller molecule, for the same level of 50 mg per dl, your osmolal gap will be up by 16. You must have observed that patient in ICU with lactic acidosis have higher osmolal gap. However, Remember that ionized molecules don't contribute to the osmolal gap because these are acids, so they ionize. And these are negative ions, and the accompanying positive ion with these is sodium. So you count them when you use 2 into sodium. Other causes for increased osmolal gap include diabetic ketoacidosis, shock, and renal failure. Addition of positively charged molecules such as IVIZ, contrast dyes, lithium, or hypergamma globulinemia can also increase osmolal gap. Pseudohyponatremia can falsely lower real sodium values, so will give a lower estimate of calculated osmolality. Other medications like mannitol, glycine-based irrigants in urology surgeries can give higher osmolal gap. Always look at anion gap metabolic acidosis when you are measuring osmolal gap because this can help you out ruling different ingestion. Some volatile alcohols have acid intermediate, which will increase your anion gap, like methanol, ethylene glycol, propylene glycol, etc. While other alcohols do not have acid intermediates like isopropanol or acetone. Patients with DK can have osmolal gap. And as we talked about, keto acid and lactic acids do not cause osmolal gap. But in DK, you have accumulation of glycerol from fat oxidation and acetone when you convert from S to acetate and other acetone breakdown products. So DKA patients can have large osmolal gap as well. Patients in ICU with shock or elevated lactate can have osmolal gap as well. 
In ICU, these are usually seen because of use of IV medication, which are constituted in propylene glycol, like lorazepam, multivitamins, and nitroglycerin. You can have endogenous compounds like glycerol and acetone, which are products of fatty acid drug breakdown. Understand that critical illness is a catabolic state, so these molecules are present in larger quantities. And there are cell breakdown, which release products of glycogen and release the contents of the cell into the serum. Usually, osmolar gap is less than 20 milliosmol per liter. However, higher osmolar gap can be seen as well. There are no good studies to assess positive and negative predictive value of osmolar gap. Lind et al. showed that with a cutoff of more than 10, you have sensitivity of osmolar gap to be around 0.85. And with cutoff of more than 20, your specificity of osmolar gap was 0.75. The biggest problem with these studies is the timing of presentation of ingestion. And as you know, the later you present, you can still have toxic ingestions while your osmolar gap will be normal. Also, there's a wide range of normal osmolar gap, so it lowers both the sensitivity and specificity of this test. Lack of studies does not mean that utility of osmolar gap does not exist. If it is high, it can tell you about unmeasured osmol which are likely volatile alcohol ingestion. And even if the numbers are normal or low, you can still have volatile ingestion. You have to just keep an index of suspicion. A pretty good skeptic view of osmolar gap can be found in this link. In summary, osmolar gap can help you identify volatile alcohol ingestions. So order one, if you see an unexplained anion gap metabolic acidosis, coma of unknown cause, or suspected drug overdose or suicidal attempt. Calculated osmolality is given by twice the sodium plus glucose by 18 plus BUN by 2.8. Use correction factor for ethanol if you're suspecting multiple alcohol overdose. Osmolar gap is measured osmolality minus calculated osmolality. Osmolar gap less than 10 are normal, though it can still be abnormal in certain patients, while more than 20 is usually seen in alcohol ingestions. Absence of osmolar gap does not completely exclude alcohol-related intoxication and always look at anion gap to help you further pin down the type of ingestions. These are the references. Thank you.